facts. In case you're tuning in for the first time, let me catch you up. You see, the other day my kooky Aunt Murgatroyd sent my friend Molly and I a mysterious package. She said it was a time machine. We didn't believe her at first. Boy, were we wrong. Then she recruited us to be part of a secret order of problem solvers who travel through time and space solving riddles and puzzles created by the troublesome trolls. They're like the bad guys. Anyway, now every day is one big adventure as Molly and I use math and logic to try and solve mysteries about true histories. Ah, here we are. The U.S. Supreme Court in 1863. Yep. Now we just need to find Aunt Murgatroyd's message. Oh, boy. What? Where did she say it would be? According to her last message, she said it will be under the statue of a lawgiver who was born in 1810 and died in 1750. Well, there are statues of lawgivers all over this place. But wait, how can someone be born in 1810 and die in 1750? Maybe they're a time traveler too? Or maybe your aunt made a mistake. Oh no! Aunt Murgatroyd doesn't make mistakes. True. But still, you can't be born in 1810 and die 60 years earlier in 1750. Right. Hmm. Wait a second. What if 1750 came after 1810? How would that work? What if they were born in 1810 BCE? BCE? As in before the Common Era? Exactly. Think of dates along a number line. Put zero right in the center. That zero is the start of the Common Era. From that point forward, we add years, and the numbers get bigger. But if you go back in time before the zero to BCE, the numbers count down towards zero. Oh, kind of like negative numbers. Exactly. Negative four is smaller than negative one. But if you were counting forward from left to right, the four would come before the one. Ooh, good thinking, Max. Now we just need to find a statue of a lawmaker who was born in ancient times. You know, the tricky thing about negative numbers is that when you add a negative number to something, the number gets smaller. For example, 5 plus negative 4 equals 1. That makes sense. Right. But if you subtract a negative number, the number gets larger. What? How can numbers get bigger by subtraction? It's strange but true. Imagine a number line. Subtracting a negative number means going in the opposite direction from negativity, which leads towards positivity. Cool. Hey. A good way to remember that is by thinking. It's always a positive to subtract negativity from your life. Ooh, I like that. Hey, look! It's a statue of Hammurabi who came up with an ancient code of law and was born in 1810 BCE and died in 1750 BCE. Nice! We found it! Now what? There's another message from Aunt M. It says... Find the famous Mark and get Abe to the address. And it's another riddle. Of course. What kind of mark are we looking for? Landmark? Beauty mark? Check mark? Denmark? Skid mark? Gross. How about Mark Twain? Ah! Whoops. My sincerest apologies. (laughs) Didn't mean to cause a stir. Uh, Looks like I've added an unexpected chapter to your day. OMG. It's Samuel Clemens, a.k.a. Mark Twain. I love your books. They're classics. Classic? As in a book people praise but don't read? What? No, I've read them all. Wonderful. It's Molly, yes? Yes. That makes you Max? That's me. Why does the great Mark Twain, author of Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn, know our names? Aunt Murgatroyd said you'd be stopping by. Of course Aunt Murgatroyd knows Mark Twain. She knows everyone. So then you know about... Time travel? Sure. Ever read my book, A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court? About a guy who travels back in time to old England? Everyone assumes it's a work of fiction. If they only knew. So wait, you must be the famous Mark in Aunt M's message. 
Now we just need to figure out who Abe is and what address we need to get him to. Ugh, these clues are impossible. Now, now, all generalizations are false, including this one. Huh? Meaning, solving this problem is as simple as mulling it over a bit. Sometimes the solution's right under your nose, waiting for your thoughts to catch up. Here, take a seat. I'm just finishing up getting tonight's newspaper ready for print. That's right. You started as a reporter in Carson City, Nevada. Yes, but tonight I'm here in D.C. on a special assignment. Check out tonight's edition. Hey, this is a story on Abraham Lincoln being invited to speak at Gettysburg. We just need to find the address for Gettysburg. That shouldn't be too hard. Actually, I think we need to get President Lincoln to the Gettysburg Address. That's what I just said. No, the Gettysburg Address isn't a place. It's a famous speech. Oh, right. Duh. It's actually one of the most important speeches in U.S. history. Which, to me, is U.S. future because it hasn't happened yet. The trolls must want to stop the speech from happening. We have to stop them. But where do we start? The secret of getting ahead is getting started. And the secret of getting started is breaking complex, overwhelming tasks into small, manageable ones. Starting with the first one. Find President Lincoln. Precisely. If he's going to Gettysburg, he'll need to take the train from Washington to Baltimore for the first leg. He usually travels in a special four-car train, which I should be able to get us on as special guests. No way! Well, I once said fame is a vapor and popularity is an accident, but they do get you into places. Let's get going. See? Not so hard. This train is awesome! And we're making great time. Maybe this will be an easy mission. Just had to jinx it. I'll go see what's happening. Maybe it's just a cow on the tracks. I spoke with the conductor. Apparently someone sabotaged the train tracks just past Baltimore. We're stuck here while they fix the tracks. How long will that take? Could be hours. Could be days. Days? Then President Lincoln won't get to deliver his address. We gotta do something! What's the 1863 version of Uber? What now? Never mind. We still have four hours to get there. Uh, let's consult this train map. We could go back, take the B and O line, and then take a coach. There's a B and O line? Like in Monopoly? What now? Never mind. Besides, that'll take too long. What's this line? That's the uh, Northern Central Railway. Hmm, it seems we can switch tracks onto Northern Central, which takes us up to Hanover Junction. Then we can transfer to the Gettysburg Railroad for the remainder of the trip. That's a lot of trains. How long will it take? Don't believe it, but I'm about to do a classic train-based word problem. Hmm, words should never be a problem. Never mind. Do your thing, Molly. Okay, let's say the train travels from Baltimore to the Northern Central Railway at an average speed of 25 miles per hour. Upon reaching the Northern Central, the transfer to Hanover Junction is accomplished by a team of horses. Figure they travel around 5 miles per hour. Okay, 25 miles per hour for the train, 5 miles per hour for the horses. Once at Hanover Junction, we'll continue on to the Gettysburg Railroad, which moves at an estimated speed of 20 miles per hour. Looking at this map, the distance from Baltimore to Hanover Junction via the Northern Central Railway is approximately 50 miles, and the distance from Hanover Junction to Gettysburg is about 17 miles. Okay, but can we make it? Doing the math, we know distance is equal to speed multiplied by time which is the same as saying time is distance divided by speed. The distance from Baltimore to Hanover Junction is 50 miles. Divide that by speed, 25 miles per hour. 50 divided by 25 equals two. So, two hours. The transfer at Hanover Junction is pretty much right there, but let's just assume it'll take 30 minutes to move from one track to another. Which leaves the trip from Hanover Junction to Gettysburg on the Gettysburg Railroad. 
that distance is a little under 20 miles. And since that train goes 20 miles per hour, it'll take about an hour. So two hours plus half an hour plus one hour equals three and a half hours. And we have four hours. Which means we can do it. We can get Abe there in time for the Gettysburg Address. I'll alert the conductor. Nice work, Molly and Max. Let's just sit back and enjoy the ride. Again. Excuse me, Mr. Twain? What are you writing on the back of that envelope? Just jotting some thoughts about Gettysburg. Just think about it. A new nation, conceived in liberty, and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal was founded in 1776. Uh, how long ago was that? Hmm. 1863 minus 1776. Carry the one. 87 years. 87. Uh, what's a nicer way to say that? 87. I meant more poetically. Uh, say, how many scores are in 87? Scores? What's a score? 20 years. Oh. Well, in that case, divide 87 by 20. Let's see. 20, 40, 60, 80. That's four times with seven left over. Ah, so a uh, four score and seven years ago. Very nice. Hey, isn't that how President Lincoln starts his speech? I wouldn't know. It hasn't happened yet. But maybe I'll just stick this note inside this tall hat. Isn't that Abe Lincoln's hat? Is it? That was amazing. I can't believe we got to witness the Gettysburg Address. Mind blown. The speech sounded great, especially the opening. Mm-hmm. Well played, Twain. Anyway, we should get back to our time. I still have homework. I never let schooling interfere with my education. Then again, I quit school when I was 13 to become a newspaper apprentice. That's how old I am. And I'll be 13 in a few months. But there's no way we're quitting school. Good idea. Before you go, uh, the train conductor gave me this note. He found it near the train tracks that were tampered with. I'm not sure what it means. It says, play rock, paper, scissors. Count on rock. Oh, brother. Wait. Let's take it one step at a time. Play rock, paper, scissor. Ready? Ready. Rock, paper, scissor, shoot! Scissor! Rock! I win! Again. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock! Paper. I win. No fair! You shot late. Did not. Did too. You guys are like two bald men arguing over a comb. Remember, there's a puzzle to solve. Sorry. The clue says to count on rock. What does that mean? You can't depend on your eyes when your imagination is out of focus. Not helping. Count on rock. Count on rock. Wait, Molly, throw paper. Paper. How many fingers do you have out? Five. And scissors is? Two fingers. And rock is? No fingers. Which means counting on rock equals... Zero! The next clue is zero. We need to get back and add it to the puzzle. Okay, fire up the time machine and go! Sure thing. Um... It doesn't seem to want to let me enter our year. Maybe the battery's dead. No, full charge. Try turning it off and on. Nope. It's only letting me enter a positive or negative number, 2,000 or more. 2,000? This is 1863. We only need to go forward 161 years. Hold on. I've got an idea. Remember the positive and negative numbers on the timeline? Yeah. Maybe we can math our way out of this. If we're in 1863 and we go back in time 2,000 years, it becomes 1863 minus 2,000, which on a number line comes to negative 137. You want to go back to 137 BCE? I'm not done. We want to go to 2024. So first, let's figure out 2024 minus negative 137. Right. 
But remember, subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. Exactly. 2024 plus 137 is 2,161. So if we jump back 2,000 years, then go forward 2,161 years, we'll wind it back home. Please work. I don't want to be stuck 148 years before I was born. The two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. Whoa, that's heavy. Thanks for everything. Great meeting you, Mr. Twain. Hey, Rufus. It's good to be back. Maul, can I borrow your copy of The Adventures of Tom Sawyer? Look at you reading the classics. Oh, yeah. Mark Twain told me it's filled with sick pranks I can pull on Brad. Max! This episode of Mysteries About True Histories was written by Adam Markowitz and voiced by Dexter Danger Mayo, Molly Smith, and Taya Garland. Original music by Brian Suarez. Our associate producer is Max Kamaski. Technical direction and sound design by Josh Hahn. The executive producers are Adam Tex Davis and Jerry Colbert from Atomic Entertainment and Jed Baker and Agaranish A. Palmer from Starglow Media. Mysteries About True Histories is a Starglow Media and Atomic Entertainment production. Grown-ups, looking for ad-free audio fun for the whole family? Subscribe to Starglow Plus on Apple or wherever you get your podcasts. Learn more at starglowmedia.com slash subscribe. Catch you on the next Mysteries About True Histories. Mysteries About True Histories.